I have joining me today a good friend, Assemblywoman Shanique Spade, representing Essex County. We sit together on the New Jersey State House floor, which is the oldest state house in the country. We end up getting in a lot of trouble because we always end up chatty uh, because there's good work to be done. And I'm proud of a package of bills she just put together to put a spotlight on administration equity. Welcome, Assemblywoman Spade. Thank you so much for having me. It's definitely a pleasure to be here in this room with you besides the state house. So we could definitely <laughs> let our guard down. Yes. And we won't get in any trouble here. So not, not to say we, we, we are free to talk and, and, and just really um, connect purpose to power. Uh, being women legislators in the state house, let alone women of color, uh, we've seen a lot. We get to amplify voices that often don't make it to that space. Uh, and how did you come up with one, the thought process of putting together a risky package of bills, administration equity. I would, it, you know what, I would definitely say it was risky. Um, one of the things was we, my office, I, I'll call on my team, we was having a conversation in our office about menstrual disorders, menstrual equity, period poverty. And once we started discussing that, I started work on maternal health and maternal mortality when I first was elected into the assembly. However, I just felt like, okay, how do we connect the dots with uh, maternal mortality, menstrual health, period, poverty, and uh, menstrual equity? And oftentimes we leave the ministry, anything dealing with administration and saying period, we're afraid to talk about it. It's a shutdown. Right. End of conversation. Right. (laughs) So I'm like, how can we be afraid to talk about this issue? And we talk about maternal uh, mortality and um, prenatal issues if we're not going to talk about administration. And to me, that's the start of like our womanhood. Yes. Right. And um, growing up, my mother really didn't have conversations with me about it. It was just like, okay, you get your period. Um, it's normal. Whatever you're dealing with, go take care of it. Listen, I had an older cousin help me through that first walk. How about you? You know what? It was my sister. I actually came, uh, my period started when I was in, actually the ninth grade. I was like a late bloomer. Um, It started in school. Mm -hmm. So I had a stain on the back of my pants, had to be picked up from school. Um, And I had to just deal with it from there. And, And it was... Anything that I went through dealing with my period, mm-hmm. I had to suck it up and deal with it myself. Like, nobody to really, really talk to. My sisters talked to me about it a little, right. but it was just like, it's normal. So, you got your period and, you know. Absolutely. The the hormone changes that, that come right. with that, right? Uh, getting your period in school and not being prepared, not having uh, the proper uh, protective equipment such as pads or tampons. Again, all things that we're, we live in secrecy on. Right. Right. So so putting a spotlight on it, uh, let alone maternal health. And I worked with you on a number of those bills because black women were seven times more likely to die right. during a time that should be exciting. Uh, and we've talked about that earlier on this show. There's something about it. Uh, but creating spaces where we can have this open dialogue, that's that's hope for today. I'm encouraged by it. Right. One of the things I can say is, when I talk to men about it and then when I talk to some women about it, men just say, OK, whatever. They they don't want to hear about it. And I told a man not too long ago, I said, you only you are only here because of administrator. Mm. <laughs> no, not an administrator, administrator but a administrator. administrator. Right. That's it. I said you're <laughs> only here because of that. Um, and then some pushback I did get from women. Um, and I said, maybe you just lived in a, did maybe a different area or you just had that regular period and didn't have any issues. Mm-hmm. But when you come to a community like, like mine, and it don't even just have to be a community like mine. It could be all communities where women experience issues and a taboo and not normalizing the issue when it comes to your administration. And as or we say aunt, the aunt flow is here yes. or it's that time of the month. Girl, it's just my period. That's, That's it. it. That's it. That's <laughs> it's it, right? I, I don't feel good. I need to lay down. I need to rest. Um, um, and, and part of your legislation, uh, because these are very uh, normal parts of the reproductive right. Right, systems that we have in our bodies. Uh, and part of your legislation is deals with affordability because there's a cost to this. So right. if you have economic insecurities, right, you can't afford just basic food. We hear a lot about inflation, gas prices going up, cost of rent, cost of utilities. You and I talk about all these things that hit the pocketbook. 
trying to make sure you have these protective items um, and they're not covered. So your legislation deals with that. If you want to share how you came you know, to that conscious decision to really have impact in that space. One of the things that um, so oftentimes when I do legislation, it actually comes from a personal space and a personal place in my life. Growing up, I remember my mom, we was in a house fire and then we became homeless for over like a year or so. So we could not, it was the affordability of food, the affordability of housing, because we were staying at the YMCA at the time. We were staying in a shelter. And I just remember the struggle that my mother had uh, growing up. She never told me, well, I can't afford pads, but if we couldn't afford food, I knew she couldn't afford pads. Right, right. And the realization of the struggle, what, what my mom went through, I'm just like, dag, I never thought of it like that and just looking at what our population go through now that when it comes to the affordability of it um, you have some women that have four or five girls in their household that's right and when you calculate four or five girls plus yourself as a mother the expense that it it brings to your household is pretty high absolutely um, so when we talk about the uh, medic the, the snap benefits um, covering these products to me it just makes sense right um, I and just snap is supplemental nutrition, nutrition assistance, assistance. Yes. programs uh, just for those who don't know um, that help with uh, nutritious meals is federal and estate but right. there's limitations right 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 um, and just you connecting that personal experience, which was some blank, blank, blank years ago, right, right, uh, to today's uh, uh, individuals and young women who may still suffer from some of those insecurities, housing insecurity, um, and making that choice uh, to have hygiene products, uh, and there's a health consequence to it as right. well, right, 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 right. And I, I, one of the things is, um, I, I usually say like, uh, just. When you go to the bathroom and you need toilet tissue, um, your administration is like a bodily function. Sometimes you're not on a 28-day cycle. That's right. And it just starts, like, all of a sudden. And you're That's trying right. to find that gar girlfriend or somebody with a pad or you, you nobody has a pad. That's and you right. have to go to the alternative of getting toilet paper and using toilet paper from the bathroom. I, I would say possibly every woman had yes. the experience using toilet just paper at one time prepared. in their life. It showed <laughs> up when it was not scheduled, right? Exactly. Sometimes a good thing. Sometimes, sometimes a bad, <laughs> right. bad thing. So, so... Just the importance of it, because when you talk about the equity and affordability, but the health part of it is very important. Um, I was never taught about the health component of your administration and all the effects that it can have um, growing up. So it's it's important to just connect all the dots when it comes to the equity and the health. Absolutely. And we're talking about, you know, some things um, that we've heard the terms, you know, fibroids, um, uh, just having uh, venereal diseases because you're not changing your pads frequently enough for good hygiene because you can't afford them. Right. So uh, in training and teaching on the impacts that you may not learn in school health or at home. Uh, so really having these very public conversations. I mean, I've seen you on Instagram <laughs> um, having, you know, packaging parties uh, just right. to get some kits together for young women. Uh, tell mm -hmm. us about that. You had a swag T-shirt on one day in the state house. I'm still waiting for my yeah, T-shirt, by the way. I have T-shirts available tomorrow, too. So, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm I still waiting one. for my T-shirt. Okay. So one of the things was, um, as you know, being in the state house, um, some, you have a package of bills and sometimes it may not be popular and they may not get posted and you possibly waiting on media to cover your stuff. But one of the things I said, no, I'm not going to wait for anybody to cover anything that I have to do because this is important. Um, at, we all have, you know, tons of legislation, but That's half right. of the world ministrates. Yes. Um, so the pa the period pack, we had the period packing party and we had a photo shoot party. I thought it was important uh, to have both um, just to get women involved and young girls involved. And I had some women there that, was, that had their little girls with them and said, you oh, know what? Right. I did not know how to talk to my daughter about this, but um, 
I had to, we came up, my office came up with a, a logo. How? What is going to be our logo for this? Um, <laughs> Gotta have fun with it, right? Right. <laughs> what is going to be our logo for this? I said, you, listen, regardless how far we go um, um, with doing this, I'm already out here on a limb. And the period party was a success. The photo shoot party was a success. We had about 50 people at the packing party, about Almost the same at the period photo and, shoot and party. And tell us what was in the packages that you all put together. We um, we put like maybe three uh, like sanitary product, sanitary pads, tampons, Advil, tissue, hand sanitizer, and we also put chocolate in there. As you know, uh, during that time, <laughs> a little comfort <laughs> during that time of the month, <laughs> you, um, you you start to crave something sweet. Um, so we. The bag was a it, it was a, a bag full that can actually cover girls for like at least two months. And when we did that, we did it in June. So the girls that received those products was most likely covered throughout the summer. Oh, great, great. And and just some facts. Eight out of 10 black women develop fibroids during their lifetime, but they are less common among white women. Up to 40 percent of all women experience heavy bleeding or pain so severe they regularly miss school or work. Uh, and according to Healthline Media and medical providers, we urge them to speak up and, and seek help. Uh, I know family members, uh, including my daughter, gets migraines, lethargic when her period comes. She just needs to lay down. But society has us moving, moving, right? Take your right. Advil, take your leave, water, hot water bottle. Remember that one? Right, right, right. Put that on the pain area. Uh, all uh, homeopathic remedies um, that we've tried, herbal teas, etc. Uh, but sometimes we just need to, as the old folks say, sat sit, down. Sat, sit, ooh, <laughs> sat, sat down. down. Sat, sat down, down right? child. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just rest. Right, right. And in some countries, not as developed as the United States, they give you time off. They do. When you they menstruate. Do. They do. Uh, because it's unsanitary, unclean. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and also you're in pain. Could you imagine? Right. Time so, off. Right. It. Time off to just rest and take care of your health and, and let your reproductive system do what it needs to do naturally. Right. You know what? Just saying that um, I remember uh, not too long ago I was on my way to work and my period started like when I was on my way out the door. So it's not that I wanted to be late. Um, it was just I had to be late because right. my period started and I had to go change clothes, you know, to get, you know, yes. to get ready all over again. So that actually put me an hour behind when we talk about women and their menstruation. Yes. It's not that we're intentionally doing things. It's just that we don't know what our life, body is going to do at that particular moment. And what you talking about, the uh, uterine fibroids, when I grew up, if you had cramps, or was bleeding heavy, that's just a part of your, actually your period. But in all actuality, in doing the research over the past uh, year, it's actually not normal for you to bleed as heavy right. as as you are bleeding. So um, it, you should go to a doctor and have a discussion because it could be endometriosis. Yes. Um, that's causing the heavy bleeding or the heavy cramping. And then that's going to cause you to lose, uh, miss work or miss school. Um, and then if you have endometriosis, again, the affordability of products because you're bleeding so heavy, right. the pads that you may go through th through that period Absolutely. of time is actually insane. Absolutely. And and really just, you know, potential for toxic shock syndrome, syndrome. right, because you're, you're bleeding so heavy, um, you know, checking out cystic, right, issues, mm -hmm. um, which we hear about, usually found later. They're usually small. We think it's fine, then continue to grow. And by the time you go to the doctor, sometimes it's treatable, untreatable, impacts your ovaries, and then you're into maternal health issues. Right. Right. I, I have a funny story, though. It was it's funny. I didn't start using tampons until I was like 30. Right. So so before you even go here. <laughs> so tampons uh, typically uh, and I know in my household. As a as a kid, it wasn't an option. Right. We were using pads. It right. was not an option. Right. Now go ahead. So it, listen, <laughs> my mother would never say my mother would have never introduced tampons in our house. It's a no for her. Right. No for us. Hard no. So I did, I'm 43 right now. So I didn't start using it until like 30. Right. So I'm thinking I know enough about using a tampon. Oh, right. Okay. You didn't you didn't call a sister lifeline or a girlfriend. I, I you. Because you was grown. I, I was grown. I right. got this. Right. You know, I, 
I'm educated enough <laughs> to know right. how to use a tampon is just a tampon. Right. Not realizing that I shouldn't use a tampon, like, really at the end of my cycle and it's not really, like, heavy, right? Right. So this might be a little graphic, but I got to put it all out there. See, you know? <laughs> this is why we get in trouble so, because it's going to be some truth telling here. So... <laughs> And I often tell the story. So I'm like at the end of the cycle where there's really nothing on the tampon. And so like a little piece of the cotton came off. Oh, boy. And I thought like, oh, no problem. It's no problem. Oh, you know, oh it'll come out. Mm-hmm. It'll come out. So like a day or two later, I started experiencing headaches. Oh, boy. I was starting. To, I had to go to the emergency room. I had a fever. Oh, boy. Um, yes. So I had to go to the emergency room. And that's why Mama said don't use them. That's why she said don't (laughs) use them. So you got to understand. So when I get to the emergency room, I'm like, they're like, why are you here? To just go through the conversation of why I am here. Absolutely. Um, What happened was I was using a tampon and I'm like grown. Right. right? Right, So it's embarrassing. Right. And I'm like, I have a fever. I have headaches. So they had to, I had to, you know, I went to, and then I had to explain it again to the nurse. Yes, Then explain it again to the doctor. I'm like, this is the most embarrassing thing. Yes. Maybe if I would have did a little bit more work on this, but then I had to, they had to give me an antibiotic and take that little teeny piece of cotton out, like the size of a crumb that that was was causing, causing, yes, and could have killed me. Yes, causing an infection. And, And just, you know, fortunately you knew enough. Right. To go to the ER and also to tell your story. Um, and we talk about health equity. Right. Right. And and you have providers who at least believe what you said. Right. So, because <laughs> part of the time you're telling the story again to see if you're telling the truth. Right. <laughs> right. So they right. can treat, treat you appropriately. Um, but imagine if you didn't get help. I, God only right. knows. Because I had a fever. Right. I had headaches. I couldn't eat. And I was just like, is this because of that tampon, that little piece of cotton? Like, it just didn't come <laughs> right. out. And thank God I went. Um, yes. But I was just like, this is really insane. So I'm very cautious and aware yes. of the usage of tampons. My daughter just started using them without letting me know. So I kind of, like, flipped on her, like, you should have told me you was using right, a tampon. Right. Because this is what can happen if you don't, you know. Do it right. Well, you can educate uh, yeah. young people. And, and, again, the things that we learn from, from our parents, you know, where our moms, right, in particular, where right. things you don't talk about. And some dads have to have the conversation, too. Right. Let, right. Let's be real. Some dads have to have that conversation. My husband, his most embarrassing story, and, and I can tell oh it now, was he had to go to the store to get his mother's pads. And, of course, uh, they didn't have bags. They just gave him the pads. And, you know, he got picked with a kid, took it out of his hand, and they were playing football toss oh with it. So, gosh. But he could not go home without those pads. That's important. <laughs> Regardless of what those boys did, he had to go home with Absolutely. the pads. Absolutely. Or he would have been experiencing Absolutely. another hormonal issue. Exactly. Exactly. So so part of what I love um, uh, about uh, Assemblywoman Shanique Spate is, is her fiercelessness, uh, being bold enough to take an issue uh, that has been taboo right. uh, in the black community and for women in general in girls and adolescents taking the shame away from it the stigma away from it and then putting a real policy in place to make right. sure we have access in the schools to make sure there's no charge for it to open up benefit opportunities public assistance benefit opportunities to purchase them so I'm going to give you some space to talk through these bills because what's it, 14 bills? Um, I, I yes. don't know if you're going to give me space to so, talk about all these bills because act, it actually has went up to 21. So so, so this <laughs> so. spate is, is no joke. When, when she's on it, uh, she's pretty um, uh, dogmatic and pragmatic and making sure she's hitting the issue from every place. But just, just give us some of the highlights so people know the um, work that goes into policy change. Okay, um, where do I start? So one of the uh, pieces of legislation, we actually just passed it through committee, um, is providing products for homeless shelters. Um, another piece of legislation is basically legislation establishing a requirement to screen women diagnosed with um with preeclampsia uh, for endometriosis. So we've actually been working with doctors um, in regards to OBGYNs in regards to that to see how the screening will take place. Um, and then also one of the biggest one of the biggest things I've been getting is a lot of slack for uh, the excuse absence for students bill. Um, I had to tell somebody one day, they said, um, 
Well, we've been going to school for years with our periods, and we never um, need to excuse absence. But I say you never recognize the ones that possibly wasn't there because they didn't have the affordability or access to these products. Um, So you probably was there, but that girl wasn't there. Or they possibly can be experience a menstrual disorder Mm -hmm. and they can't come to school because they're bleeding heavy. And then the ones that do attend school, they always have to leave like a half a day because it's just actually too much. And it's not that I'm just trying to give a pass. I give a pass for women where we need to be more sensitive around this issue and understand that the administration is an issue and we have to acknowledge it, especially in the schools, especially in our state, to know that, you know, girls do suffer with different issues when it comes to um, administration. But that was one of, like, the biggest ones that I'm still getting slack for and just understanding, people understand, like, this is something do we really need to pay attention to? Because products need to be available just like tissue is available. Could you imagine going to take a poop and there's no tissue in the bathroom? Listen. That's like your period. (laughs) And and, and God rest his soul, Governor Florio. Remember, New Jersey was in a tough uh, financial strait and put tax on toilet tissue and they papered the state house in toilet tissue because it's an essential need for all. Right? Everybody. That we should not be taxing and make sure it's available. And I just want want to think us to think about what a school room looks like, right? You're not on a soft, cushy bed no. in a school room, right? No. You you are up, you're moving, and heaven forbid if you got gym that day. It's the worst. Right? It, it's the worst. People don't It's the worst. Right? So, so just remembering, you know, those things and trying to um, prepare for the day, as you said, even as an adult woman, you know, going to work, you have to prepare for the day and you have to plan a little different. You got to dress a little different. You got to walk a little different and move a little different, right? And wait, our hormones, another thing all is, it's all over the place. <laughs> and it's not that I'm the angry black woman no. on this day. It's just that I'm the angry hormonal woman. Absolutely. <laughs> and I don't day. feel my best self. Right. Right. Because my reproductive system is working. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what it's we, real. we don't talk about that. No, we do not. We do not. There's never been a space. So you created this space, right? Um, the OBGYNs, uh, important conversation, right? We we usually don't see them till later in life. Right. Right. So so making sure there's a real space and really hitting homeless shelters as people face housing insecurity right. uh, today, um, not only in New Jersey, but across the country. We just see report upon report about housing not being affordable. So if you go into a homeless shelter. Right. Having access to those products makes a world of difference. Right. Because you imagine you have so many people that lives in live in a homeless shelter and the affordability of just these products but you know sometimes tissue is not even in the bathroom right right so imagine a woman being on your period no tissue possibly in the bathroom and no products in the bathroom you are screwed right because there goes your your make do right right you, you can't even do a make do makeshift right um and again the health issues the hygiene that comes from it the stigma the mental health and wellness right comes into it because right. you're not feeling your best self and then you can't even take care of a basic human need right right with dignity right and if and if we just start having these conversations and someone said we should, well well the boys don't need to be in a room when you have this no they do need to be in a room because they need to understand that you know once they get of age and start you know having sex and you know possibly um, if you get getting someone pregnant and just understanding how that woman's cycle Absolutely. operates, um, you have some men that actually keeps track of their uh, their spouse's um, cycle or okay. their daughters or their daughters <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly <So>. exactly. <laughs> but it's just as important to men for not just women but to men as well. So they will understand that this is a normal bodily function and. It's not that we ask for this. Guess it, what? It just comes with being a woman. It comes with yes. being a woman. And it comes, it, we like, we got to just learn how to, like, embrace that part of it. Because when you're out, my mother used to say, wrap everything up. You don't want not one piece of paper, nothing. Like, you don't want no signs of your period. No, somebody need to know. <laughs> yes. Because... Well, well, that, and keep your little spare, spare week. Re- my mother always made me keep a spare. Yes. Right? You, you, 
because somebody would have a need. So either I'm going to help somebody else and I got to make sure I replace it. Right. right? Or, or help myself. Always have it with you. Always. And I taught my daughter the same thing. It's like a spare tire in your car. Absolutely. Always have a spare pad in your, in your <laughs> bag. That's it. Always, always have a spare pad in your bag. There I you like go. that. So, so that's. That's the next uh, add to the swag. Right. <laughs> always add a... Th- oh, I like so that. Always have a spare, spare pad, pad in, in your, your bag. bag. Um, and again, just basic tricks um, that go with it and just empathy um, and policy changes, right? Because it's, it's one thing for us to understand uh, mm-hmm. where where we are with our reproductive health. It's another thing to to actually put policy changes in that destigmatizes it and provides resources. Right, right. And and um, when it comes to um, not only resources, but just one of the bills that I did was just establishing a, a menstrual health curriculum in the schools. Great. Um, back to the education. Back to the education, exactly. Because, you know, we had in health, we had it was the basics, but it didn't get into detail of like everything when it comes to your menstrual your menstrual health and being a woman and, and how your body, your, the, pu- your pu- the puberty you may be going through. Yes. But nobody has this conversation with us. Um, I, I don't remember having a conversation. I just remember Never. about doing it, my, you know, doing it myself. Like, OK, let me figure this out. But I don't think now, like being at the world has changed. And I just feel like it's 2022. Why can't we talk about a period and it's just be normal to talk about a period? Right. And you don't want to go to the nurse's office. That's Sometimes, right. depending on how bad your period is that day, you want to just sit there for another half an hour because you say, if I get up. Absolutely. God only knows we, what Absolutely. might be on this chair. Yes, yes. And you got, you got to have that girlfriend behind yes, you say, the, check. That's the fear. Put the bag up for me. You yes. know, <laughs> walk behind me, support me, right? Get me there. Right. Yes. And then we got to, even when it comes to women, we just got to learn how to support each other in this space and not Absolutely. make each other feel uncomfortable in this space. Like, it's okay. It's a part of life. Absolutely. And we got to be careful of the bullying. De- right? Definitely. The, the bullying um, that can be associated with it because um, you're not feeling your best self, right? You're, you're not feeling pretty either. Oh, no. Right. You bloated. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're just all kinds of uncomfortable. Right. <laughs> Right. Uh, but why didn't it. we have this the crazy we didn't have this conversation growing up. You're gonna be bloated, you're gonna go through hormonal changes. We 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 got the you you need to take care of yourself, make sure you you stay clean as best as possible, but you're gonna move through it, live through it. I did it, you did it. And every but Right. Welcome. Welcome yes, to womanhood. That's that's it. <laughs> it was just you get your period, welcome to womanhood, now moving right along. Yes, yes. And and we really should have that pause, have that education piece, have safe spaces, um, and trusted people right. who give right. you good information. Because the one thing we got to watch in this world of Internet uh, with our oh, young definitely. people. Right. Right. <laughs> right? right. And, and you and I talk about this all the time is, you know, sometimes you're not getting good information. Right. Um, so part of why I wanted to have you on the show today is for some good information, some right. real talk, some straight talk, um, trusted partner in the work that has to be done uh, and really hitting pragmatic needs for people today. So I you know, appreciate and respect you for that all day long. Thank you. I, I don't know if you know, but my my office have now become a period hub. Ah, yes. Uh, tell us about a period hub. Look so basically, um, we have we have products um, available to whoever may need them, um, and we also will be giving out uh, material and resources and connecting women with who. Whoever they need connection with when it comes to these these issues right here, but more so, my, I have tons of products that's available to anyone in the area, anyone that may need them. Um, someone told me before. Um, so if we did provide them in the school, or if we did pr- people or have them in you know regular bathrooms, people may take them. I said they may take them because they need them. Right. A pad is something you're not stealing. A pad is something you need. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. <laughs> and I, I love the period hub concept in my district. Um, the school. We put together a wellness closets. So we got washer dryers there. Uh, we provide all types of supplies for kids who may not have it at home. So they can wash their uniforms because they're wearing right. uniforms, not be embarrassed, not be bullied by it. And we thought it would be a stigma. Kids would be shy. But it turns out it's the hangout spot. Right. They it, need it. They need it. And they can have pride in it. It's no cost to them. Um, but really, the wellness uh, hygiene sensitive uh, and really being there for people, uh, young people, and hopefully they'll pay it forward. Right, right, right. right. They'll pay it forward. 
We have we have a bill, another bill in regards to um, um, the public libraries um, uh, becoming a hub. So we actually meeting with the libraries to talk about how would that look and what would that look like, because. You, like we said, you could start your administration anywhere, but it'd be great to have the libraries and to become a part of this. And great. they seem pretty excited. So I just want to make sure whatever we do and however we craft it, because I don't want to craft no legislation that's not going to move. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure it's crafted enough that it's it's good for the library and then good for the uh, constituents as well. So what I I just love the uh, ingenuity. The library is another place that is a safe haven, right? right. Shelter, um, information source uh, for a lot of uh, students as well as adults. Um, so uh, making that a hub ingenious. Uh, as we wrap up, uh, what would you like to leave our audience with? I mean, you you shared a ton of, of nuggets with them. I hope you know raised the conscious level, destigmatized. Uh, taught administration equity, uh, the importance of it, and demystified some things around it. But what would you leave our audience with today? Don't be afraid to talk about your period. Don't be afraid to ask for resources when it comes to this. And I just I feel that we're in a year of 2022 and we're going to normalize this topic and make sure our boys know about it and make sure our young girls are comfortable being on their period and also talking about it because it's the big it's a big stigma around it. So I just want to make sure that everyone for all administrators out there <laughs> Um, (laughs) be comfortable in who you are be comfortable in your womanhood because it's a part of us and it's actually nothing we can do about it but embrace it thank you thank you so much for spending time with me on There's Sumter About It Uh, you heard it here first from one of my good friends in the New Jersey legislature my uh, seatmate that I get in trouble chit chatting with in the state house but we're doing good work and trying to trying to demystify Uh, literally a topic that has been taboo for us to talk about publicly. So the administrators, uh, let's get out there. Let's say it with pride. Reproductive health is a part of this maternal health. And let's continue to build upon the health, safety, and wellness of our women and girls. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I am administrator. (laughs) All right. (laughs) There's Sumter About It, a podcast from WBGO Studios. Like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts or go to wbgo.org slash studios. Associate producer, Regina Wilder. Produced by Jamara Wakefield. Engineered by Corey Goldberg. Executive produced by Billy Robinson.